It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. It is Saturday night in Hollywood, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith, the fat one. And I'm Ralph Garman, the comfy one. Yeah. What's the start date, Ralph? Start date 972144. We're outside the Nimbus 7. Never mind. <laughs> uh, welcome to Hollywood Babylon, ladies and gentlemen. It must be Saturday night in Hollywood. I just drove past the Hollywood Bowl, and there was so much fucking traffic. Tons of people running around, buses everywhere. They must have done a Star Wars event. Oh, that's right, the music Maybe, of Star Wars. I think yeah. they do shit at the Hollywood Bowl out here, like play John Williams music and show and clips. And Anthony or Daniels narrates it. Oh, so C-3PO was there as they well. They do all six films, I think, the music of all six films, and he stands there at night and says, then Altu and I were very scared. And then he goes on and on and on. Our kid's like, who the fuck is that guy? I never saw him in the movie. Is he Wedge, you know? I saw kids, it was a beautiful sight though. All these kids running up and down a Highland uh, Avenue. That's, it's kind of, yeah, it's gotta yeah. be Highland mm -hmm. right there. By the Hollywood Bowl, all with fucking lightsabers, like smacking at each other really? in the middle of the night. So I pull up to the light, I'm waiting to go. I look down to the left, just a sea of kids hitting each other with fucking lightsaber blades. And I remember going like, younglings run! <laughs> Skywalker's going ape shit! All I think of when I see kids with little kids with lightsabers, that whole scene in that last Star Wars movie where a dude comes into the church and he's like, click. Closes the door, <laughs> turns on the out. blade, yeah. and the kids are looking at him like this, and he puts the blade down, takes his dick out. No, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, he had to make a foul movie even worse. I made a better movie, That's Ralph. That's true, and it's better than what, the, what we got. Too Those true. kids got... Uh, got they had a, a lightsaber fight in the cafeteria. Did you see that story? Yes. In the middle of America somewhere? A high school. These two high school kids had an uh, impromptu lightsaber duel in the, in the school cafeteria. Uh, nobody was hurt. It resulted in you know, a standing ovation. It was These two kids were about to graduate and shit. Not anymore. No. Fucking yeah. principal comes along. He's just like, I don't like these Jedis. You know, eat you die. You know? And so... <laughs> All of a sudden, these motherfuckers got uh, 10 days suspension and they weren't gonna be allowed to walk at graduation for the stupid lightsaber fight. The good news though, with enough pressure, there was a Facebook page, let them walk, they were saying. The evil empire was crushed. The principal said they could walk, so they're gonna be able to walk. I just imagine the, uh, the principal in a big cloak behind a desk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they will not let your anger flow through you. <laughs> Waiting for the kids to go to the dark side. <laughs> All right, uh, hey, it's, it's uh, almost Father's Day, you know, Kevin. Yeah. And, and the it, good people at Mangrate have the perfect Father's Day gift if you haven't got one for your dad yet. If you haven't, you're just a dick. Yes. <laughs> this is the Mangrate Grill Enhancement System. In the barbecue world, in the cutthroat, devil-may-care barbecue world, Ralph, the Mangrate Grill Enhancement System is the Liam Neeson's cock of barbecue. <laughs> it's it fucking huge. And listen to this. It's pretty fucking heavy, it's too. It's got some girth oh, and yeah. some heft. Oh. The ladies love the man great. Yeah. And it comes buckets. No, it doesn't. We're not going to put that on the box. And if you, if you order the man great through our site, do we find out what that site is yet? Do we yes, know? it's Smodcast. It's, you go to the Smodcast.com Babylon page, and there's a, a, a clickable ad right there, man. It's cheap. It's like 20 bucks for the grill enhancement system. It's uh, cast you, iron. You get the brush as well. You get the brush to clean your grate. Yes. And it, it, it makes it like a professional steakhouse. It, it keeps the juices in the meat. Right. As opposed to getting um, burnt and dried out on the, on the fire. It keeps the fire away from the meat, which keeps it nice and juicy and tender. Keeps that shit luscious. It does. <laughs> Uncut like a European cock. Oh. <laughs> it's just $19.99 if you go to our site. And I don't uh, think we're selling it. it very well. You know what we I, need is uh, Mangrate Theater. Well, we have been doing the Mangrate Theater commercials for the past couple weeks. And we've had some uh, requests, actually, this week. 
saying, uh, since it is Father's Day, I thought Indiana Jones and his father, Henry Jones, yeah. Yeah. might want to uh, go into Mangrate Theater and try to sell the Mangrate. And he gave us some suggestions for the titles, either Indiana Jones and the Great of Man, yeah. or Indiana Jones and the Penitent Man Great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what that would sound I like. I wonder Ladies what it would. Ladies and gentlemen, Man Great Theater. Junior! Junior, what are you getting me for Father's Day? I don't know, Dad. I haven't been around to it yet. I've been really busy, so I don't really know. Junior, you know I've spent my entire life looking for the Holy Great. Something that I can put on my barbecue and keep my meat from drying out. I don't know. I don't know. The Holy Great is in there, but you must go and get it. Take these clues I've given you. The penitent man. Or... The penitent man. The penitent. The penitent man. The penitent man kneels before. The penitent man kneels before. The penitent man. The penitent man. The penitent man kneels before. The penitent man kneels before God. The penitent man kneels. <laughs> All right, I got the man great now. <laughs> Well, bring it out now, so we can barbecue, you stupid fuck. <laughs> I named the dog Indiana. Credits. See, yeah. man, well done. <laughs> well done, just like your meat will be on the Man Great Grill Ooh, Enhancement System. Smooth. Ladies, thank that you, thank good. you. I've been selling shit. Uh, the Man Great <laughs> Grill Enhancement System, these are the only cats on the planet who have advertised with me and Ralph here on Babylon. Show them your love. Go buy a fucking man great so they'll leave us alone. Um, <laughs> we love it. I use it. I've actually used it now. We barbecued some shit. Oh, congratulations. It's awesome. It I've used work. it for a while. It works really well. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, like nobody's here. Really? <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> Interesting. When right? they first signed up, they sent me one. I, I started, slapped it right on the grill, and I've been using it for weeks. I started selling it willy-nilly without using it. I mean, it could have exploded on a child or something, but <laughs> turns Big out mushroom it cloud over your barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> turns out it's a pretty good product. It's actually very good, and well it's done. made in America. God damn it! There it is. Yes, this is the steel that won the war and beat the Kaiser and you know <laughs> killed Hitler in the bunker as yes, well. Yes, the Mangrate killed Hitler in his <laughs> bunker. <laughs> Your patriotic exactly duty to buy one for dad. And not just for dad. Sometimes mom grills as well. Actually, mom grills dad quite a bit, at least in my house. <laughs> All right, let's give some shout-outs to some folks who came from particularly long distances or are celebrating occasions. We always love to uh, thank them for coming out here to the John Lovitz Podcast Theater. Starting with uh, Arthur and Madison. Are Arthur and Madison in the house? Oh, <laughs> Madison hand, couldn't be more embarrassed. went up. Her face went down, man. <laughs> Ralph and Kevin, my wife Madison and I are huge fans of the show, so we're thinking of popping our HBO cherries for our one-year anniversary. Right. Madison, man, like the mermaid? Yes. My name is E, E, E. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks falls in love. Yeah. <laughs> um, then Arthur continues, I figured I'd get more ass, though, if I took her to a topless resort in Cabo. <laughs> so we're coming two weeks after our anniversary instead. Well done, <laughs> Arthur. Smart of you. I'd really appreciate it if you'd wish us happy anniversary in your old-timey radio voice, Arthur and Madison. Arthur and Madison, eh? Two great monikers and also two great presidents, Chester A. Arthur and James Madison. So happy anniversary and God bless America. By the way, yeah, I, I didn't want to leave that out. P.S. Kevin, my wife thinks you're totally hot. Oh, no, I'm sorry. My wife thinks your wife is totally hot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I misread that, too. Oh, that's even easier to hook up. Yeah. <laughs> See me after the show. A three-way with Kevin Smith. <laughs> this is from uh, Anthony. Is he uh, here from the state of New Jersey? Wow, right up front. Welcome, sir, Welcome. from the great state of New Jersey. The oh, easy, state. easy with the greatest state. <laughs> Enough goddamn New Jerseyans around here. Woo! Coming to Kevin's home state of New Jersey, uh, flying out for work, managed to move my schedule around to be near Los Angeles on Saturday night just to see the show. Wasn't sure if it was a good idea, potentially screw with my work schedule, but then I heard their Garmy t-shirts were on sale and it gave me the little extra push I needed to say the hell with work. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for 
coming here and buying one of those. If you haven't seen it or picked it up here, uh, go grab yourself a Garmy t-shirt before you leave. They might ask you for money. In fact, they probably will. But make sure you... <laughs> they definitely will. Yeah, make yeah. sure you grab them. Where can they get one if they're listening at home? Where can they get the shirt? We haven't uh, put them on the internet yet. Okay, we'll but they will be, soon. so stay tuned. Or come out here to California. Let's say you live in Iowa. You want one of these shirts? It'll or New Jersey, like grand. this guy here. Yeah, take the trip out, get a shirt. That's right. Uh, Bill and Sue, speaking of Jersey, Bill and Sue, you guys in the house? There we go, more Jersey folks. Right on, Traveling man. to California from the finest state in the Union, New Jersey. What is it with you fucking people who think New Jersey is so great? <laughs> you ever been there? Have I been there? I grew up across the river. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not the same So no, thing. I've never been there. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knew well enough to stay the fuck out of that state. <laughs> yeah. Just what we need, more bad drivers in California, people coming from Jersey driving around. <laughs> The Jersey driver in Philadelphia, that was a stuff of legend. We'd be driving down the freeway in Philadelphia and somebody would cut you off and go, fucking Jersey drivers? Uh, in Jersey, we say that too. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Bill and Sue are celebrating their 20th wedding anniversary. Holy, Holy shit, moly. man. Wait a second, 20 years of being married, how long were you dating prior to that? Two years two prior? Years. How long into the two years were you fucking? <laughs> He's like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Bill. He's a man. Totally, man. So you guys been having sex for 22 years. That's, see, it's fucking possible. It works, man. I've been banging the same chick 12 years. Thir 13 years now. It's possible. How many light years you've been having sex with the same person? Uh, nine. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it like is. Like one day you just stopped having sex with everyone else or stop pretending you could ever have sex with anyone else yeah. and then just start having sex with one person. Like, these two have been doing it for 22 fucking years and yeah. they're so bored with each other they come to this show. Right. <laughs> we had a choice. We could fuck each other again or we could go see a podcast. She's like, if I have to eat your cock one more time, I'm going to shoot myself and not with your dick. Let's go see Babylon. Yeah. But you're sorry you came now, aren't you, Bill and Sue? Happy 20th anniversary. A lot of love in this room tonight. How about the 15th anniversary for Gil and Dawn? Are Gil and Dawn in the house? Right here, happy you 15th anniversary. You guys should fucking sit together and That's, then swap. Yeah. <laughs> the Spice happiest of anniversaries. Bit. Yeah, totally. Analversary. Uh, they're here for their 15th anniversary. They would love a shout out as the penitent man, Harrison Ford. Well, he was just selling man grades earlier, so he's, he's already been burned. <laughs> um, Kevin and Ralph, me and two friends are going to be at your show. John is a Babylon virgin. John and Cynthia, you guys here? John and Cynthia? Oh, fuck you then, I'm not reading your email. <laughs> Although Cynthia did write, if you can convince Kevin to tell us about his first blowjob experience, I will buy you a drink. <laughs> did you tell a story recently to Katie Morgan or something? It says oh, I, bl I blew myself once. I think that's what they were talking what? about. What? Yeah, when I was younger, I was way more nimble and shit, and I spent a couple days doing the, you know, it's very... To the very, you gotta be careful. I was laying on my back on the bed and I kept throwing my legs back over myself and shit like that, like a gymnast, like I was about to do a fucking roll and stand. Yeah. But it was a roll and suck. Oh man, now I'm sorry I asked. I was one of those guys, I had to rule it out, make sure that like, hey man, I might like it. So I took a shot in the mouth and I was like, I don't know what I would say after this. <laughs> and that was my own. So, you know, I was like, I guess I'm kind of a, a girl's guy or something like that. But I did it. You know, you always think about, like, if I could suck my dick, I'd never leave the house. That's not true. I know I'm going to be sorry that I'm asking this, but... <laughs> did you actually get your penis into your mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get, like, full fucking shaft. You I got the head. Fucking plastic man? How did you? <laughs> it was, I was like Reed Richards and shit like that. <laughs> it's tough. It's just unbelievable to think about now, because now I would, like... I've got this gut right here. It'd be like traversing fucking Africa to get to my... <laughs> Dick, but back then it wasn't as bad and so you would get like let's say that you know obviously this is not to scale right but, yeah. <laughs> but let's say this was the dick like i would get to the head and all you need is the head that's where all the action is. i wasn't looking for neck action you know so i got this right to the lips and tongue and it was pretty pathetic if you ever caught me it would have been like <laughs> <laughs> I was always terrified my mother would walk in and be like, oh my God. Oh no, why would you be scared about that? <laughs> but I did it. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the news. Yeah. Well, Cynthia didn't show up for that story, and I think she's, she's sad now. Take that one at home, man. Freddie and Lara from Mexico, you guys here? Hey. Hey, guys, how are you? Coming all the way from Mexico. Yes. I'd like to see your papers, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> you going back or are you going to stay? 
All right. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go through your luggage. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and uh, speaking of traveling, Josh and Amber are here all the way from Guam. If they made it, where are you guys up hey, here? Hey, man. Welcome, Where guys. That? Where's Guam? Yeah, yeah. That's in the Great Pacific Ocean. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where's the, the Great Palisades? Pacific? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that up by Santa Monica? <laughs> welcome, welcome from Guam. Guam. What do you do in Guam? Uh, I'm an attorney and he owns a brewery. A brewery in Guam. Right on, man. Guam. Hello. <laughs> Guam beer. All right. I wanted to read this email because I thought it was so funny. Being a married man like you are. 20 like years. These folks are. 20 fucking years. Give it up one more time for 20 years. <laughs> That's impressive. I wanted to read this email from Amber because you can just hear the fight that's going to happen later tonight <laughs> because of this email, okay? Uh, my fiance Josh and I are coming to the June 4th show all the way from Guam. I drafted you an email from us to get a shout out for traveling such a long way to see the show. But Josh thought it was too wordy, and he sent an email instead. A few minutes ago, he told me he thought he forgot to mention my name in the email that he sent. Could you please give us a shout out at the show? I'm really looking forward to seeing you and Kevin. Thanks for all the laughs. Garmy Strong in the Pacific, Amber. Oh, you know Josh got an ass full after this email was sent. Oh, so my email wasn't good enough, but then you didn't even put my name in your email. Ugh. The wedding is off. That's what I'm thinking happened. In my house, ass full means a whole different yeah, thing. Yeah, we know. <laughs> I'd be like, why is that bad? We get emails from around the world. James? Ain't no drag. Norman's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. Yes. Ralph and Kevin, my name is Chris Leland. I've been listening to the show since the beginning. A while back, I was listening to your show on a long trip with my 10-year-old son. I thought he was listening to his own music on the iPod. Turns out he was secretly listening to the show. <laughs> 10 years old, for those of you who are following at home. Even though he is way too long to be, young to be listening, I decided to go ahead and let him listen with me. I know it might be wrong. No, it not, might, not might be wrong. It's fucking wrong. <laughs> Who's Liam Neeson, Dad? Sure does have a big cock. <laughs> I'm sure I listened to worse when I was his age and I turned out just fine. No, you didn't. You're a shitty father. <laughs> anyway, it would blow his mind if you gave him a shout out on the show sometime. His name is Daniel. Daniel, call the authorities. Your father is not a good person. He's a huge fan now. So much so, he's asked me about renting Sharktopus. Daniel, buy Sharktopus. Don't rent it. I get more money that way. <laughs> Thanks to you and Kevin. Have the great shows. Don't forget to give that penis a sandwich. You're a horrible, horrible father, sir. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Welcome if you're listening to the show. Let me tell you about butt sex. <laughs> <laughs> Boop. This is a great email. I look forward to more from this gentleman. He did not sign it. I think you'll understand why when I read it. Ralph and Kevin, I am currently hitchhiking across the country using the power of the internet to find places to sleep and people to smoke weed with. It's the night of day one, and I've already smoked three times today with three different people. I am telling everyone my name is Frank Garman, by the way. I will send you another email next week because hopefully I'll be in the audience on the 11th. See you then. No signature. What a surprise. He's too stoned to remember to sign his name. Sometimes I don't like to write my name. That's right. Hey guys, I recently came across this link and thought it was so awesome. The first thing I thought of was you two doing Babylon from behind it. Thanks for the podcast, the Eric Mason on Twitter. Uh, here is the picture of what he found on the internet. It is a desk made of Han Solo in carbonite. I'll happily invest in that. How man. great is that? It's, uh, it's hand in the carbonite with a glass piece on top so you can sit behind it and use it like a desk. Yeah, imagine Han Solo hanging on the wall and instead they just put uh, legs under him and a little glass piece over him. You can eat on him. Or it'd, it'd be about this size, wouldn't it? I'm telling you, I, I've had the life-size Han Solo piece, so it's it's basically all they did was add some legs to it and put the glass on top, so it, it would totally work. I'm just saying. I'm, all right. That'll be for your one-year anniversary of Babylon. <laughs> I'll be like, ta-da, table. <laughs> 
Is that instead of the butt sex? <laughs> I know you're all no, about that's the butt the, sex. what the table's for. Oh, I see. <laughs> Ta-da, bend the fuck over. <laughs> Ralph and Ken. I'm not going to survive the freezing process. <laughs> He's no good to be dead. I love you. I know. <laughs> Ralph and Kev, my name is Katie. My boyfriend Davis's birthday is coming up. He's in love with your podcast. He's been asking for anal for a while, but I wanted to wait until his birthday to give it to him. But he doesn't know that he's going to get it. So I thought it'd be awesome if he were to find out he's getting anal while listening to your podcast. We get to deliver the news. Oh, my God, man. This is tremendous. What's her name? Her name is Katie. Katie, is, loosen his name, up. His name is Davis. Davis, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, you're going where no man apparently has gone before. The balloon knot. Uh, I suggest they both drink heavily. <laughs> and this, and you're not a guy who drinks, but you know, no, know yeah, the not at all. And, and you know what? What's his name? Davis. Davis. Don't yeah. be a fucking hog, Davis. Just you don't have to go to the shaft. Just the head is fine. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm never fucking you. <laughs> Once you get inside, you know, just go balls deep. That's what I say. Gusto. Life's for the living, Kevin. <laughs> Davis, just the head is fine. <laughs> Bury that shit, Davis, to the balls. Tie a board to your ass so you don't fall in. Yes, because he may never get another shot. Just the head is fine, The head Davis. is not fine. Just the head. It would be in great. fact, be honest. If you're a dude, you don't even have to go all the way. Just the thought of it. Press at the front. Like, oh, and that's it. <laughs> Save yourself both a lot of misery, and then like 20 minutes later, you're like, I'm so sorry about that. I'm such a pig. I don't know what I was thinking. Isn't that how it goes in your house? No! <laughs> thought it was that way for everybody. Smile on my face, I have my smoking jacket on, I'm smoking a pipe, and I say, was it as wonderful for you, darling, as it was for me? I didn't think of the snifter approach. That's right. <laughs> you got a snifter before you put it in, or not? <laughs> it would be great if Ozzy Osbourne could give him the good news, Katie adds. Davis! I've got some good news for you. Your dick's going to be covered with shit, Davis. Sharon! Sharon, Davis going to fuck in the ass. Congratulations, Davis. <laughs> Hollywood Babylon, the only show where they pat you on the back for anal. This show has really taken a strong anal bent in the past yeah. couple weeks. We're demystifying. We're taking the stink out of anal, Ralph. <laughs> this may be my favorite email of the, uh, of the week. My name is Eddie. Long time listening, first time writing. I am from Bolivia. Do you know where is Bolivia? <laughs> well, English is not his first language, so let's not mock. Well, I am writing this mail to let you know that I used to listen to your podcast to learn English. When I was studying, I used to have the hottest teacher ever. I went to that class only for her. I don't want to bother you with story, but yes, I fucked her. Look <laughs> at Borat wrote in. <laughs> I make that fantasy true. And she wasn't drunk. Please high five between you two. <laughs> what do you have to say about this, Kev? Please, Ralph, could you say congratulations in Arnold the Governor voice? Well, I will write soon. Thanks for your show, Eddie. I love Eddie, it. write us every week. Yeah. I command it. <laughs> Eddie from Bolivia, man. I had lots of sex, but that is a story for another time. I don't want to bother you with story. No, bother us. We'd love to know the details. I make that fantasy true. She wasn't drunk. <laughs> Please high five between you two. That was awesome, man. It needs to be more of that. I want to close every email with that. Please feel free to high five the nearest person. Give him the governor voice, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Eddie from Bolivia. Ah, uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie from Bolivia. I, uh, I think I used to have a housekeeper from Bolivia. Yeah. Turns out, turns out she was too fertile. And I have a lot of time alone by myself. Just coming, it's like pumping, uh, like pumping into a muscle, coming all the time. 
I'm always coming. Now, mostly by myself. And uh, my last email, uh, last email of the week. Ralph, huge fan of the show. Been listening since the beginning. You guys make me laugh harder than anyone else on a weekly basis. My favorite movie trilogy of all time is Back to the Future. And I was dicking around online the other day when I came across this video. I was surprised that I'd never seen it since I consider myself a big fan of the trilogy. Anyway, I was hoping you guys could shed some light on what the fuck is going on here. Garmy Strong Jake. Now, I don't know if anyone else has seen this on the, uh, on the internet. You can find it on YouTube. If you just look at Back to the Future 3, it is a scene from Back to the Future 3, the last of the Back to the Future movies. Remember when Doc Brown's on the train with, um, what's, the, what's the woman's name, the actress's name? He uh, plays his wife. Yeah, Mary, Mary Steenburgen. Steenburgen. And he's got the two kids, mm -hmm. Jules and Vern. And he's talking to Elizabeth Shue and Michael J. Fox, and they're talking. It's the very end of the film. And in the background, one of the kids who plays his sons is going off. Have you seen this clip? No. He's doing the weirdest shit. <laughs> and no one caught it, I guess, and this is in the actual film. So I brought the clip in for you to look at, but I have no idea what's going on. He's sort of beckoning someone to his cock and pointing to his penis. <laughs> and he's got to be five. <laughs> I'm assuming his dad let him listen to our show. That's the only explanation I can come up with. But here's the video I was talking about from Back to the Future 3. I brought this note back from the future and now it's a race. Of course it's a race. But what does that mean? Look at this kid it on the right here. Your future. <laughs> well, let's show it again. Let's we'll show it in slow-mo so you can, you can see exactly what we're talking about. But there's this deliverance-looking kid here who's making a gesture and then pointing to his dick. <laughs> right here, and then he's like, yeah, this is where I want you, right here, right on the old dick, right there. <laughs> That's in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of pride myself on knowing all those weird little moments in films and stuff. I'd never, never heard of that before. That, man. that was quiet and on the down low. Well, the fucking Doc Brown sitting there is summing up the entire Back to the Future series, like, the future's unwritten, Marty. You can do whatever you want. And the kid's over there going, like, fuck you, Doc. <laughs> but he's, like, saying, hey, come here to this little cock right here. He's talking to Einstein the dog or Elizabeth Shue. I don't know who he's referencing. He's talking to Elizabeth Shue, Marty's girlfriend. He's like, come here, here's the future. <laughs> In the future, I'm huge. <laughs> Baby Liam Neeson. <laughs> Um, do you know what he was doing, though? I think he's basically, you know, it looked like maybe that was a further take down the road, and the kid clearly knows that that's when they push in. So essentially, the kid's sitting there going, like, okay, now's the time. Like, he'd seen them do it a few times. So as he goes like this, that's when the dolly, they dolly in on that shot. So to me, as a guy who's been around film, it says that's like six or seven take, and that kid was just like... So he's mimicking the... He thing. knows exactly when it's going to move. You see it in movies a, a lot, usually back in the 80s, too. A lot. If you watch, there's a scene in E.T. where Henry Thomas is at the table where he's telling the kids, like, shut up! Nobody go out there. And see Thomas Howell, I think, is the kid who's sitting across from me. You can just see the side of his face, and he's literally mimicking the dialogue. So as Henry Thomas goes, nobody go out there. See Thomas Howell, I think it is, goes... Oh, wow. Little moments like that. So basically, it's like if you get kids on a set long enough and they say watching it over and over again, yeah, they may forget. Especially he was young. Yeah. So he's doing this. The, the, the hand gesture means the, 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 the camera's coming in. Yes. What does the pointing to his dick gesture mean? <laughs> on a movie set, Cecil Ralph. B. DeMille. On a movie set, when an actor points to their cock. Yes. You know what that means. <laughs> All right, as we do every week, we say goodbye to some friends that entertained us over the years with the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now, another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. Got a lot of emails this week from Disney fans. Apparently, um, Wally Bog is no longer with us, or Wally Bogue, I guess his name was pronounced. He was Pecos Bill at the Golden Horseshoe Review in Walt Disneyland. In Disneyland, the Golden Horseshoe. One more time, the Golden Horseshoe Review, uh, aka the worst attraction at Disney. <laughs> the one as a child, you were like, no, anything but the Golden Horseshoe this Review. This guy would sing and make balloon animals and do jokes and stuff <laughs> yeah. for 27 years. He did it. Yeah. He holds the record in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most numbers of theatrical presentations ever performed by one performer. 
Performed it over 40,000 times at Disneyland. Three days, three times a day, five days a week. Wow. Yeah. He Gone. Died, he died at 90 years old this Holy week. Holy shit. Well, that's a big bucket of wind, but that ride still sucks. Because <laughs> it's not a ride, Ralph. No, it's, it's where adults do. go to drink, and kids are like, can we go on the submarines? Or Disney, used to. Disney apparently loved him, put him in a couple of his movies, and intended to use him as the voice of Tigger in Winnie the Pooh. But then Disney died, and they gave the role to Paul Winchell. Mm. Yeah. So the first Tigger was him, or he never he never got it? He never got the gig, because Disney died before he got a chance. How pissed off was he, by the way? Yeah, really. <laughs> Fucking Disney. You know, he was just shaking his head. I gotta go back to make balloon animals in the park. Yeah. Could have been somebody. Yeah. Anyway. Here, kid. Here's the kid's like, can I have a Tigger balloon? He's like, you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> Steve Martin said he was the first comedian he'd ever seen live and had a big influence on him as a kid. Oh, really? Because Steve Martin worked he at did, Disneyland. Yeah, and he used to do balloon uh, stuff all the time. The cover of one of his albums, he's wearing like a balloon hat. Yeah. But he used to do that as part of his act. Uh, Martin tweeted this week, my hero, the first comedian I ever saw live, my influence, the man to whom I aspired has passed on, Wally Bogue. Right on. How man. about that? So, so well, I mean, big bucket of win. What a great life he had. Also passed away this week, Dr. After death, Jack Kevorkian died at 83 years old today. I didn't know whether to put him in the good or the bad, but I decided to put him in the good. I, honestly, I don't. I never understood why people. I don't think he was a bad guy. It's I don't like, think look, so there's some people that want to die, and I'm trying to help them do that peacefully and shit. And I think we should have the right to die if we want to, especially if your life. It's your life. Do with it as you you're please. You're in pain and you're suffering and stuff. So yeah. he passed away. Uh, big bucket of death. Big bucket of death. <laughs> absolutely, sir. You're right. Big bucket of death. <laughs> Clarice Taylor, who played uh, Bill Cosby's mom on The Cosby Show, died at 93 years old. Hmm. She died in her home at Englewood, New Jersey. She was glad to go because she was in New Jersey. <laughs> Did you hate her that much or what, man? <laughs> she received Emmy nominations in 1986. She and uh, Earl Hyman, who played his dad on that show, both received Emmy nominations for their roles as Anna and Russell Huxtable. I always remember those episodes. They did one a year. They'd do an anniversary show for his grandparents. And then the Huxtable family would always do some lip syncing to some James Brown song or whatever. Yes. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I hated those fucking episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Glad seem to she's get along gone. very well in Glad she's family. gone. Don't say it. And James Arness, actor best remembered probably as Marshall Matt Dillon on the TV series Gunsmoke, passed away this week at the age of 88 years old. He was, um, it was one of the longest running TV shows in history. 20 years it was on television. Married as long as these two right That's here. That's right. <laughs> it was the longest running until Law & Order uh, just beat it in 2010. But his role as uh, Marshall Dillon was sort of the quintessential cowboy role. Originally, John Wayne was, was asked to play the role on television. He passed but suggested they talk to his buddy, Jim Arness, for the role. So it wasn't, wasn't Jim Arness, didn't he also play... The Thing in the original The Thing movie? The original Howard Hawks movie, The Thing. He yeah. was the creature in He that. was the creature, yeah. yeah. His, dad, his uh, brother was Peter Graves from the Mission Impossible series. Oh, get out of here, yeah, really. they were brothers. You ever seen a grown man naked? That guy. <laughs> that guy, yeah. <laughs> uh, passed away this week from natural causes. Apparently, his friend and manager said, no diseases, nothing untoward. He just got tired, I guess. That's the way to go. Probably that had is. his boots on. Yeah, man. He had the, uh, the forethought to write a letter to his fans on his website before he passed away. Get the fuck out of That's here. It's pretty cool. Let me just read you a little piece of it. Had a wonderful life, was so blessed with so many loving people and great friends. The best part of my life was my family. Oh, stop it. I'm going to cry. Stop it. We're at a comedy show. Oh, my God. Don't read a this dead man's nice. letter. Stop this. That's nice. I know, but it's, it's so heartbreaking. I'm going to cry. Oh, I got to think about other shit. Especially my wife, Janet. Oh, uh, Liam Neeson's dick. I wanted to take this time to thank all of you for the many years of being a fan of Gunsmoke, The Thing, How the West Was Won, and all the other projects I was lucky enough to have, Stop it, James. have been allowed to be a part of. I had the privilege of working with so many great actors over the years. I was honored to have served in the Army for my country. I was at Anzio during World War II, and it makes you realize how very precious life is. Thank you again for all the many letters, cards, emails, and gifts we've received from you over the years. You are and always have been truly appreciated. Sincerely, Jim Arness. <laughs> pretty cool. Move on. God, that's fucking beautiful, man. It's really uh, nice. Dude, he, what a fucking giver. Right up to the end, he was like, you know what, I'm gonna write him a letter as well. Wow, that's fucking Here's sweet. a little piece of Jim Arness from his classic role as Marshal Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. Go get Bulo. 
Yes, sir. You and I come awful close to being dead men, Marshal. Jacqueline, you take Bulow, and you take the rest of your men, and you get out of Dodge. Get out of Dodge. He gave us get out of Dodge. That's where the phrase came That's from. where that came from, get bitch. Wow. <laughs> if you. nothing else, if he only gave us get out of Dodge, let's get out of Dodge, that'd be enough. That was. He did much 20 more years. Big bucket of win. That's beautiful. Made you cry like a little it girl. Did. That's kind of, that's so fucking touching. I didn't cry. And I know uh, <laughs> we've already talked about Liam, um, excuse me, <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen's cock. <laughs> Not as big. Not as big. Just uh, as luscious. We talked about his passing, but just this week they showed a, they published a photograph of his gravestone, which I thought was great because he always wanted the, uh, something special put on his gravestone and they finally sent a picture of it. So I wanted, to, I wanted to put this up. It says, Leslie Nielsen, let her rip, he said, because he loved fart jokes. And so he put that on his gravestone. <laughs> this is a big bucket of wind. That's awesome? nice. Yeah. All right. Let Hollywood helpers in the news. Hollywood helpers, can you need a helping hand? Thanks, mister. Now, this is a cheat. It's not exactly a Hollywood helper, but it is a cool story because we this both is, love hockey. It's a hockey helper. I know. We love hockey and we love show business, and this combines the two of them. Uh, this week, Bono found himself caught on the side of the road <laughs> in Vancouver. Yeah, that dude goes, ugh. <laughs> no, it's not a Bono's a Saint story. It's just Bono trapped on the side of the road in Vancouver, hitching a ride because he was caught in the rain. He almost went to the bathroom. Ugh. Not another Bono story. <laughs> we do so much Bono news here. I know. It's the, like, this is the first time the I think he's ever been said here. So he's hitching a ride, and he gets picked up by Gilbert Boulet from the Oilers. Yes, from the Edmonton Oilers. Who'd you think I meant? <laughs> you know, the, the Houston long. Oilers? Yeah. The football team? Was Doc Brown showed up with a train. His kid was going like this. <laughs> I jumped through time. Come back to Houston. <laughs> he was very cool, Bono said of Brule, describing him as a very modest man. Uh, apparently, he asked, where do you want to go? And Bono said, just take me where the edge is. <laughs> so he took him to a gay bar? <laughs> Anyway, at the show in Edmonton that night, Bono decided that he wanted to be Gilbert Brule, said as much to the crowd, and then started naming who the members of his band would be if they were hockey players on the Oilers. He said Larry Mullen would be Marc Messier. He said Adam Clayton, the bassist, would be Grant Fuhr, legendary goalie. Yes. And the edge, he's kind of the great one, Bono said, and he said he would be Wayne Gretzky in the band. So he took this, uh, so... Uh, so Bono said he's Brule, basically. Yeah, but Brule didn't play with those dudes. Those dudes no, played he years before. It's an all-time list, I guess. So this Oilers. story is about how Bono doesn't know jack shit about <laughs> hockey. Yeah. You're right, sir. Ugh. <laughs> it's like going like, Bono hey, said he's really a rugby fan, but now he's interested in ice hockey. So, really? Yeah. Is that what he's yeah. changing over now? Yeah, so he maybe gave me a fucking ride. I'll watch his sport. <laughs> Can you do a Bono? Do you have a Bono? I don't really know. No, because that's British, and he's Irish, so that's wrong. <clears throat> Talk amongst yourselves, Irish, Irish. He's working on it, man. Watch the process. He's trying to find the leprechaun in his head. <laughs> oh, so I really don't like uh, ice hockey, but I'm looking forward to watching more of it now that I was picked up. As the that deserves a drink right there. So, well, you, got, you got to say something like, how can, how can we all sing when there's so much suffering? How, much, how can we all sing when there's so much suffering in the world? Yeah, man, holy shit. Now say, in the name of love. In the name of love. No, I sing think. it. In the name <laughs> of love. No, 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 get in that pose he does, like this. <laughs> Why do I think there's a big punchline to this whole thing? There's not. They kick me in the ass <laughs> or put a, put a sign on my back when I'm doing something. He thinks he's Bono. <laughs> In theaters this weekend, new releases, Beautiful Boy comes out. Michael Sheen and Maria Bello play parents who find out that their college son has gone on a killing spree and then killed himself at college. That's, that's bad, right? That's what that movie's about? Yeah. Kyle Gallner, by the way, plays the son at college. He's our guy. He's, he's, our guy he's from in our Red, Red State, State as well. Yeah. He'll also be in Hit Somebody. Uh, Meatloaf also stars in this film. Right on, man. Yeah. His uh, name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
Beginners opens up this weekend. Ewan McGregor is a man who finds out his father, played by Christopher Plummer, is gay. Comes out. His father comes out just before he's, he has a terminal illness and he also comes out as a gay man. Okay. That's a surprise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Father's Day surprise you don't look forward to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Dad, here's the man great. What? You suck cock? All right. Well, <laughs> I guess you've already got the great man. Man great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, marriage, and, uh, excuse me, love, wedding, and marriage. Mandy Moore stars in the film about a marriage counselor who finds out her parents are getting divorced. James Brolin and James Seymour play her parents. Are, you okay? are, are we in the middle of the summer? <laughs> Well, there is one movie that came out uh, this weekend you may want to talk about. Finally. X-Men First Class. Did you go? I've been in Boston filming a movie of my own, so I haven't had time really to go to the movies yet. Tell us about that real quick, man. How's that going? Uh, really quickly, I was out of town all week, just till today, actually, for a film called Ted, yeah. written and directed by Seth MacFarlane, the man who gave us Family Guy and American Dad in Cleveland. He is, uh, it's, it's a live-action, R-rated comedy. And uh, it is about a young boy who makes a wish on Christmas Day that his teddy bear come to life and be his best friend. And the bear does come to life, and it does become his best friend. And then we flash forward 30 years, and they're still best friends, and now they just smoke dope on a couch and watch television all day. <laughs> the bear has pretty much ruined his fucking life. He's got no job and no real foreseeable future. And I play, uh, Mark Wahlberg's the guy who's the best friends with the bear, and I play Mark's dad in flashback in the first part of the film. Again? I'm not mute, I actually have lines this time. Apparently Seth MacFarlane trusts me with dialogue. That's all I know. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Um, okay, back to X-Men First Class. You didn't, so you didn't get a chance to no, see it? No, I didn't. Anybody no. see it? Yeah. Anybody not like it? See, man, what? You didn't like it You didn't much? like it? More or less. More or less what? what? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> it's not, not that, that good. good. All right, someone says. else. Someone like it? What'd you think? Oh, awesome. 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 Well, there it is. Both sides. <laughs> More or less or <laughs> awesome. The spectrum. You choose. I, uh, I bought uh, tickets to go see it this afternoon. I bought a ticket online uh, for me and the kid. And right. then What'd right around think? showtime, the kid was just like, I don't, you know what, I don't feel like going out of the house and shit. And so I thought about going, but I didn't want to show up with two tickets because I thought the people would be like, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. Mm. Too fat to film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do plan on going. They got 25 of my dollars, but I haven't seen it yet. So uh, they'll get a few more of my bucks. They owe you. Six. Yeah, really. Yeah. I look forward to it, though, man. Fucking X-Men during the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's amazing. It always worries me, though, when they start mixing comic book stuff with true life events. Why? Because it just, it just pulls you right out of it. Because you know the X-Men didn't keep us out of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So already I'm, already I'm one step removed from the storyline. That's what worries you? I worry about shit like home invasion, <laughs> like terrorism and shit like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan in the news this week. <laughs> Apparently her monitoring unit went off. That's what she calls her vibrator. <laughs> no, she was wearing one of those anklets because she's under home arrest. And so the cops show up at her house because it goes off, indicating that she is off premises. It shows up, and according to uh, people responsible, Lindsay's electronic monitoring system went off on Monday. A representative from the company went to her home. The representative found Lindsay was there and shot her dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I just make up endings for my own enjoyment. The equipment, in fact, was replaced, so no, no, really, no, no good story ending. Although, it is interesting, I'll, I, I enjoy this story, that apparently a man called her uh, agent saying he represented Warner Brothers and wanted to cast her in the new Superman movie, and they said, well, come over and talk to Lindsay about it. Turns out the guy was just a stalker who scammed her people and just was arrested on the way to Lindsay's house. Really? Yeah. On the way? It's kind of funny, though. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it would have been funnier if he got through. Uh, Jersey Shore star Snooki in the news. Oh. Apparently she hit a police car in Florence, Italy, where they're currently shooting. So many weird things happened to this little girl. Yeah. Here's a picture of her after the accident. Apparently she was in a neck brace. But then it turns out she was just doing it as a gag and took it off, so she's not paralyzed or hurt. Thank God. So disappointing, all the news this week. No one's actually getting hurt. Whitney Houston says 30 days of rehab isn't enough. Well, 
30 years of rehab wouldn't be enough for you, Whitney. She's decided she, after completing a 30-day outpatient program, she wants more rehab. So she's going to go back in for at least another 30 days because this time she really wants to stay clean. This time she means it. Amy Winehouse, on the other hand, left rehab after just a week. That's my girl. She's touring Europe this summer. She says she's already raring to go. She doesn't need all that messy rehab. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Naomi Campbell is threatening Cadbury chocolates with a lawsuit. I don't know if you saw this story or not. It's fucking amazing. There's an ad, or there was an ad, rather, for a new chocolate bar called the Dairy Milk Bliss Bar. Here is the photo of the ad. It says, move on, Naomi. There's a new diva in town. It shows the chocolate bar on a bed of diamonds showing how luxurious and how pampered this chocolate bar is. Well, Naomi says it's racist. Because she's being described as a chocolate bar, she says. I am shocked, Naomi Campbell says. It's upsetting to be described as a chocolate bar. Not just for me, but for all black people and all black women. Her mother said, I'm deeply upset. Do these people think they can insult black people and we'll just take it? This is the 21st century, not the 1950s. Shame on Cadbury. How do they even know they were talking about Naomi Campbell? It just says Naomi up there. Well, she's assuming it's about her because she is the only supermodel known as Naomi. You think they need Naomi Watts, maybe? They're talking about her? I don't know. Like, I, if I saw that ad, I'd just be confused. I was like, what does this have to do with me eating and getting fat? <laughs> if I eat this chocolate, will diamonds come out of my butt? <laughs> It's a confusing ad, to say the least. <laughs> Naomi's spokesperson says, racism in the playground starts with black children being called chocolate bars. <laughs> Cadbury has since apologized for the ad and has pulled it saying it will no longer feature the ad. <laughs> <laughs> who are you shooting, James? Cad Cadbury, that's Cadbury? who we're shooting. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, that's a little, uh, well, I don't, mean, I don't know. That's more confusing to me than anything else. Well, obviously, they're playing off of her diva status, of her hitting her housekeeper with a phone and punching cops, and she's been in, the, in, you know, in trouble with the law a lot, being a diva and being uh, you know, out of control. That's supermodel. what I'm missing. I, I didn't even know she's been busy or anything. Oh, yeah, she's like, very really? famous for being sort of a diva, and, and she, she actually did some time for hitting her, her assistant with a phone, and she, she beat up some cops at the Heathrow Airport. She's had several run-ins with the law being a diva. I think that's what they're playing off of. I don't think they're trying to call little black children on the playground chocolate bars. If you, if you hit a cop, is that diva-like behavior? Well, it's if you're a supermodel. It's so weird. Could you imagine, man, you get arrested and you're just slapping cops, and you're like, I'm a diva! You know? <laughs> I, I can't imagine anyone ever really trying to be racist to a black child calling them a chocolate bar, though. I don't think that's never really come up, has it? I don't is that, know. Is that, a, is that a well known euphemism? Well, when I was a young black child, Ralph. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's hard because not being black, you don't know what racist and what isn't, but it just seems that's a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think the ad's a stretch. I do too. That to me it was kind of the first misstep. So, uh, more racist showbiz news. Apparently, the Smurfs are racist. A new book has been published this week called The Little Blue Book by a French sociologist and author named Antoine Buignot. And he says that the Smurfs are, and I quote, creatures living a mostly idyllic existence, packed with racial propaganda, and are embodied of a total totalitarian utopia steeped in Stalinism and Nazism. What? He says Papa Smurf is a leader of the village, an authoritarian, authoritarian figure... And their lack of private property and collective style economy is a clear nod to socialism. <laughs> Meanwhile, their enemy seems Jewish. <laughs> Gargamel matches negative Jewish characters. And Smurfette, the only female in the village, is a vision of Aryan perfection. <laughs> now, I thought this was just bullshit. Yeah. Why is the guy taking apart a, a comic strip that's been around since 19... 60, I guess. 1958 is when it started. 1960, they had their own comic strip. And then I saw this episode of Smurfs, which I thought maybe uh, gave me a little, shine a little, more a little bit more perspective. It. Yeah, here's Papa Smurf. Nur zu denken an Deutschland, an Feind und an Reich, an unsere deutsche Nation und das deutsche Volk siegt. 
Maybe the guy's got something, that's all I'm saying. Bieber fever shows no sign of slowing down. It never will. Justin just nabbed a major milestone this week. 10 million followers on Twitter.com. Yeah, that's huge, man. He followed, what's her face? First it was Lady Gaga like two weeks ago or something. Now yeah. it's him. He's, well, the, he's the king. Uh, he's got important shit to say. <laughs> Fourth pubic hair. <laughs> Hashtag cock. Bieber says he's blown away by the support. And the amount that he has followed, by the way, is 333 times the population of his hometown. Oh, that's some perspective, that's isn't cool. it? That's cool. Ah, that's cool. Good for him, man. Little Canadian kid is beloved right now. Not good for Selena Gomez, his girlfriend. Apparently all those fans are out for her blood. They're dating? S oh, it's Selena and Justin? Oh, Kevin, where have you been? <laughs> How old Didn't you see he? the Billboard Awards where they're making out in the audience? Every There's time a... he won an award, she was like kissing him right there on his... Uh, his his hairless face? Really? Yeah. How, uh, She's got a hairy face, but his face is hairless. <laughs> how, uh, how old is he? He is 16, 12. He's 12. He's not 12. He's 16, I think. 16. Really? He's 17. 17? And how old is she? She's like 18, 19 or something. That was like that. just a believer test, and you failed. <laughs> but she is of age. She is not of age. So wait, she's over 21? No, she's 18. Oh, and he's seven. That's the age of consent. That's close enough. Yeah. It's not close enough in the eyes of the law. <laughs> is that true? Like they fuck, she goes to jail. That ain't true. It is true. It's statutory rape. What if she gives him a hand job? <laughs> That's statutory jerk. <laughs> what are they doing then all this time? Just holding hands and nuzzling noses and shit? Well, all I know is she's getting her life threatened on Twitter and Facebook. Threats this week came to Selena. Stay away from Justin, pedophile. I was angry when I wrote that. I think it's true, though. I've seen Selena Gomez driving a panel van around uh, elementary schools, <laughs> giving out pretzel M&Ms from the back, leading a trail to, like, a futon mattress in the back of the van. Can you help me get this chair into the van? Is that your Ted Bundy impression? Oh, wait, is she a great big fat person? Oh, it's your Buffalo Bill. Okay. <laughs> um, what, uh, really, Facebook man. says, if Selena Gomez breaks Justin Bieber's heart, I will break her face. I wonder, do you think, like, do you think she really, do you, nah, they must be, do you, do you think he's, has he come with her yet, you think? There's photos of him on a yacht grabbing her ass in a bikini. I think he's, he's well beyond his years in terms of scoring. This yeah. dude's living the life, man. Yeah. 10 million followers, he's fucking flying jizz all over the joint. <laughs> Wait till his balls drop. He's really going to be in business then. Yeah. He's not just going... <laughs> he's not shooting blanks. The minute he's got something, he's manufacturing something, he's really going to get busy shooting blanks. All right, it's time to spend some time at the intersection of showbiz and crime. Woo! Our new segment. Is that, is that new? Do you I have don't a theme song for just, it? I don't, but we will by next week. Okay. Ben Affleck's movie, The Town, inspires a real-life crime. I thought this was interesting. Remember in that film, they put on rubber nun masks and robbed a bank? Yeah. In Palos Heights, Illinois, a man and woman wore rubber nun masks and actually robbed a bank. Here is a shot from the actual security footage. I'm not kidding. But look at that mask. That's the one from the town. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Life imitates art. They jumped over the counter with a revolver and semi-automatic pistol, opened the uh, vault, filled a duffel bag with cash, and took off in a tinted window Chevrolet. They got away with it, too. <laughs> tinted windows don't even mean nothing. They know who's inside. <laughs> It's tricky to rock yeah, around, to rock around. Um, at least, uh, at least they, uh, if, they, if you're going to imitate any Ben Affleck movie, that would be a good one. At least it wasn't like, you know, yes, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Jersey girl, the gentleman said. He stole my pun, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> he saw it coming, though. He's like, Smith's going to go for a Jersey girl joke. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Sir. Jersey girl? Yes. Sir, it's bad enough that he made it. Can't he at least have the joke? <laughs> yeah, man. Give me have, that. Have some sympathy. <laughs> that was my sense. yearly Jersey Girl joke, man. Yeah. 
Um, wow, that's fucking, I wonder how Ben feels about that. If I'm a filmmaker and somebody was like, uh, robbed a bank dressed like my characters, I wonder how I'd feel. If only we knew someone who knew him. <laughs> yeah, let's call him up. Let's hey, Ben. Let's call up Ben and see. Do it! Do it! Oh, no. Do it! I'll do it, but all you hear is, uh, hello? I'm like, Ben, it's Kevin. Click. <laughs> do it! Jennifer Garner would come down here and kick his ass if, she, <laughs> if he called this late. She doesn't go for that bullshit. Uh, Jamie Kennedy was stopped in Vegas this week. He was uh, handcuffed by security at the Cosmopolitan Casino after he got into a fight with another man. Apparently, a woman walked up to Jamie and said she wanted to talk to him about a career in comedy. The boyfriend didn't like her talking to Jamie. They started pushing each other, and security put them in handcuffs. No charges were filed because police said it was almost impossible to believe anyone would ask Jamie Kennedy about comedy. <laughs> So they let Jamie go. He was in the James Allen Bob Shrek back. He makes me laugh. He was, he was funny in that movie. In that movie, he was funny. I like Jamie. He's a nice guy. Oh, stop he it. He's a nice guy. You ever see Malibu's Most Wanted? I didn't say he was a great in filmmaker or in, in movies. I say he's a nice guy. All right. He's from Philadelphia, too. I feel bad. I feel bad punking on the guy. Where's but... shit in his mouth, dude? Give him a cheesesteak instead. <laughs> Steve Martin was uh, wrapped up in a crime this week. I thought it was pretty interesting. He was a victim of a German art forgery ring. That doesn't happen very often. It's a bad week for Martin. He lost his fucking uh, his buddy idol. from Disneyland. Yeah, he's getting screwed over in the art world. Steve bought a painting for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in two thousand and four, called "Landscape with Horses" by Heinrich Kampendunk. <laughs> That's the name. Yes. He sold it in two thousand and six. Uh, for a loss, but apparently the painting was a fake, and now the woman who bought it is upset with Martin because it was a fake. He claims he had no idea it was a fake when he bought it, and uh, police apparently say it was the work of a German art forgery ring who has been selling fake paintings for some time and bilking a lot of art collectors out of a lot of money. Now, Steve Martin is known as a uh, pretty high-end art collector, knows a lot about art. Here is the photo of the picture the actual photograph of the picture. This is called Landscape with Horses. It's an impressionist piece by Heinrich Kampendank. Now, I don't know art, but I've seen the forgery, and uh, let's put the two side by side. I think Steve should have known better, because <laughs> I certainly would have been able to tell the difference between the actual painting and the one he bought. Seems inappropriate. I would know. I'm not an art guy, but I would look at that and say, this doesn't seem to be the real painting. The, the suck it made it, man. That, that was awesome. Did he have to apologize to the woman? Who he did. He said pain? he feels horrible. He had no idea that it was, it was a fake. So uh, I imagine he would have been like, well, excuse me. <laughs> That's for the people who were born in the 70s. Sorry. I didn't even see that coming. You set yourself up, but I didn't I see that coming. I smelled it. I had to do it before he did it over there. <laughs> hey, excuse I'm, me! Excuse I'm competing excuse me against that guy, man. I normally have to contend with the quick Garmin. Tonight, it's yeah. that dude yeah. dressed like hand fucking solo. <laughs> Estella Warren, we talked about her last week. She got caught by the cops after she hit three cars on a drunken bender in her Prius. She, and then uh, escaped. Well, first she beat up the cops who were trying to arrest her. Then they got her into the police station. She got out of her handcuffs and bolted out the back door and escaped. But they did announce this week that she will not be prosecuted on felony escape charges because she hadn't actually been booked before she made her break for it. So if you try to escape before they book you, apparently it's not escape. Good to know, man. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Estella Warren. It's just you taking a leisurely stroll out of the police precinct, <laughs> apparently. I'm going to get some fresh air, gentlemen. When you're ready to book me, I'll be in the parking lot. And the biggest story of the week by far, in my personal opinion, is the fact that Emma Stone is a redhead again. Woo! 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 It's a big story. Let's throw up that graphic, shall we? Here she is. Oh, yeah. She's back. Blonde on the right, back to being a redhead on the left. She was at a screening of her new movie, The Help. And it certainly helps me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm yeah. saying, Smitty? Yeah. Right down here. Yeah. That's, where, fap, that's fap, where it affects fap. me. You know You're like little boy in Back to the Future. That's right. Pointing at your this, dick. And a little this. <laughs> Congratulations, Emma. We will have you on the show sometime soon. I know we will.
<laughs> See, I'm going away for uh, how long am I away from the show? Uh, two weeks. Yeah, next week this time, unfortunately, I won't be here. I'm going to be uh, out in New York uh, doing a screening of uh, Valley Girl with uh, Martha Coolidge and Deborah Foreman, The Valley Girl. So why doing so that soon? at Lincoln Center. Why, why, why so soon? Just caught up with them now. <laughs> just saw it. Great movie. Uh, but I'm doing that. And then the week after, I have to go out to uh, Italy for a Red State uh, film festival thing. So I won't be here for two weeks, but Ralph will be here. And I know the first guest host is... John Levy. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be uh, guest hosting next week. And we're also trying to get a very funny young lady named uh, Catherine Reitman to do the show with me. I've been a fan for a while now. She is the daughter of Ivan Reitman, who gave us, of course, uh, Ghostbusters. And sister and, of Jason, I and, guess. And, and sister of Jason, yeah. So we're trying to get her on the show, too. So she might do it in two weeks. And then you're coming back, and then all summer long we'll be here. Yeah, we'll so. be here. Let's talk about celebrity relationships, shall we? Ellen yeah, Barkin, this one blew me away this week. This was something else. Ellen Barkin, who you, know, you may know from, well, she's done a shitload of movies. She did a movie called Diner. That was her first big breakthrough. Barry Levinson, the director, gave her that role. I, this is crazy. I just looked at the headline. Did you not know I was about like, this? No, go ahead, keep going. This is um, amazing. 30 years ago, he cast her in Diner, gave her her big break. Now she has a, a new connection with Barry Levinson. She is living with his 26 year old son. Sam Levinson. She is 57 years old. He is 26. Nice. Work it, girl, said the gay gentleman here. At the, uh, <laughs> said RuPaul on the second floor. Thank you so much. Who says work it, girl? Snaps up. Except for right said Fred and uh, RuPaul, the only people I can think of. This is, she's got this dude by 31 years? Yeah. Now, if this was a male-female, if it had been reversed... Would we be even bl blinking an yeah, eye? I would still. I think that's. I'm not like I'm judging it, but I'm like, wow, that's noticeable. How but does the Barry weird... Levinson feel though? I know. Like, Th think about it. When they were shooting fucking diner, this kid was living in the director's balls <laughs> while he was directing fucking Ellen Barkin, and yeah. it would almost be as if like one day she was looking at his balls, going, "I want to marry you one day." You know? <laughs> Just his balls, not him. I'm sure. What if I don't know? 15 years from now. Harley starts dating Muse. <laughs> I'm just saying, wouldn't that make you feel a little weird? That is, uh, believe me, that's the thought that wakes me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> At all times, Jennifer's like, go back to sleep. It's not happening. It's not happening. Alec Baldwin's got a new girlfriend. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Alec Baldwin is 53 years old. Yeah. He's dating a new bio, 28 years old, who just graduated from uh, NYU. Oh, well, that's fine. That's what I <laughs> That's fucking oh, weird, we're too. Horrible, that's, what we? a stretch. How did it... I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not judging, but how do you fucking have a conversation with somebody who wasn't, like, there for all the shit that was your formative experiences and well, stuff? Well, guys like us, so much of our conversation comes... You don't think what? You don't think they're oh, talking think all talking that much? Her? No? <laughs> no, that's true. Aren't you the two from Mexico? Yeah. You waited the whole night to pipe up and be like, they aren't talking, they're fucking. No. <laughs> there is so much sex you, going on with those two. You big fat idiot, they are fucking. <laughs> he is 53, but he stuffs the cock of a 27-year-old man. <laughs> she is nothing but a sperm receptacle for him. Nothing's coming out of her mouth. His cock is going into it. They are fucking. Good, good, good. What a sexy accent she it had. It was. It was hot, yeah. man. That's why I had to stop. Well yeah. done, sir. Well really? Done. Good for you. I can see why you live down there in Mexico. <laughs> that and the beheadings. That's another reason I'd go down. I've never seen a beheading before. I'd like to check one out. That happens down there. Don't you even watch CNN or anything? No, no. Oh, yeah, the Stay drug lords here, are lopping man. off heads. Stay up here. Lips. No beheadings up here. Well, the night is young. <laughs> uh, Sean Penn and Scarlett Johansson, apparently they've broken up. Oh, they were dating? He seemed like such a fun guy to hang out with. I'm surprised. Wasn't she married to the Green Lantern? They broke up a while ago. You're going to have to stay current, son. <laughs> Wow. All right, so she went, after they broke up with the Green Lantern, she went dating Sean Penn? She started dating Spicoli. Do I need to talk to about everybody? <laughs> yeah, everybody, tell me who they are. In terms of, like, characters yes. for you? Yes, Spicoli dated the Black Widow. Okay. And then the Green Lantern was like, ooh, I'm so sad, I'm going to Oa. And then he left. <laughs> <laughs> then what happened? <laughs> and then Harvey Milk. 
and Ghost World. Yeah. And Ghost World yeah, started yeah. living together, and now they broke up, apparently. Man, that's so. That's so strange when famous people start fucking. I know. You're like, I know you. I but know they you. They fuck and... all the time. It seems like it's very incestuous, that whole world. It seems like they only fuck each other. I guess. Like uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin from Coldplay? Yeah. They just put an ad out in the paper, apparently, looking for a tutor for their children, Apple and Moses. Fucking hell. <laughs> but it gets better. They're looking for someone who will teach their children ancient Greek and Latin. Well, that'll come in fucking handy. In case they're ever trapped in the TARDIS with Dr. Fucking Who. And they have to save the people of Pompeii because the lavas are coming. Exterminate, exterminate. Quick, use your Greek. Exterminate. Yeah, apparently. Dead they, languages, man. They want to teach the kids some dead languages. Yes. I know. They have too much fucking money, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> if you know how to play tennis and sail, that's a bonus. They're looking to pay the tutor $98,000 a year. That's what they're offering as a, uh, as a salary. Uh, I will learn to do all those things <laughs> for 98K. Holy shit, yeah. man. Could you imagine if I showed up and I was like, no, seriously, I want to do this? <laughs> Well, what are your qualifications, Kevin? I was like, I know Ben. You used to date him, That's you know. Right. <laughs> Don't be an asshole. Give me this job. <laughs> Who air said that? Requiem bit. That's Latin. Is it? Yeah. I learned Latin for a little bit when I was a kid. Catholic school, they used to teach Latin back in the olden times. Oh, because they used to, the priests would do the mass. They do Latin and, services. Yeah, 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 all in Latin. Yeah. Ecum spiritu tuo. That was my mother. 90210. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My mom always used to say, she's Ecum Spirit 220, which I guess is Latin for something, one of the, the Catholic prayers. And I would say, what is that? And she goes, that's the Pope's telephone number. <laughs> She's like, don't lie to me, bitch. <laughs> I was eight. Yeah. Who has said that recumbit means, are you sleeping, I think. Really? Yeah. Sing it. Like, Brother John. That's where it came. Who has said that recumbit Father John. <laughs> a long time ago. And I'm very, very drunk. Oh, speaking of being angry and drunk, it's time for the Talentless Cunt update, Kevin. And now for this week's Talentless Cunt update, we take you to Ralph Garden. Ralph? Thank you, David. This week's Talentless Cunt update is about Chelsea Handler's new TV series, Are You There, Vodka? It's Me, Chelsea where Chelsea is too old and hideous to play herself. <laughs> Lauren Prepon, who is considerably more talented and attractive, will actually play Chelsea Handler, but The Hollywood Reporter says that the role of Chelsea's aunt will be played by Roseanne. Roseanne Barr? Yes. I'm fucking watching that oh, show. Oh, stop it. I love Roseanne Why Barr. Why do you love everyone who's bad and hideous? No, she's awesome, she's man. She's horrible. Oh, you're right. Look, this is where I draw the line, man. I'm walking off this show. No, um, I love Roseanne, the sitcom. I think it was one of the, the most brilliant sitcoms. The show was very well done. Yeah, but Did you like it at the end where she won the lottery and the whole thing was a fucking fantasy? Did you like that whole No, part? but I'm sure she didn't like Jersey Girls who were even. You know, it's like every <laughs> once in a while somebody makes something you don't like. But I, that show is fucking brilliant. And she just wrote a fantastic fucking article. I think it was in New York Magazine where she, uh, you know, talk about how Charlie Sheen is fucking losing his mind a little bit. And she says, look, I've been there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, she goes, I've been there right. and here's my perspective. And it was kind of a look back at her show and she tells the story about how for the first year, it's fucking, it's a fascinating read. Uh, she tells the story about the first season of the show. It was her act. Everything was predicated on her stand-up. Right. And stories from her and her husband and her sister. Uh, she got set up with a creator of the show. I think his name was Matt Williams. He went on to do home improvements and stuff. Right. She watches the pilot for the show at the stage. Uh, like, you know, they have a little party first time they do the pilot. And in the credits, Matt Williams is the creator and she has no credit whatsoever. And the, everything was hers. And she went to like Marcy Carsey, who I guess was running Carsey Warner at the time, was just like, you told me like this was going to be a woman's show. My name's not even on it, man. Like there's a dude's name on it. And that chick was just like, oh, you're going to ruin everything if you open your mouth and shit. And she was, she in this article, it's fascinating, she talks about from that moment forward, she kept a list on the door behind in her, in her dressing room where she was like, everybody she was going to fire the moment the show got to number one. All the people that tried to adversely affect it and make it shit. And well, that seems healthy. It's fucking, you would do the same thing. There's a list upstairs. I've seen your list. 
That but it was it was it's a inspiring. shame they didn't give her a check for that show though, right? She didn't get she got paid millions and millions of dollars later on. But her point was this: the show that they were building was not the show that she knew would connect with America. Like they kept trying to put her in like Peggy Bundy kind of clothing and shit, and she was right. like, "That's not real." Like I just want to wear flannel and shit, and they would force her into outfits, and she would just come and bring her own clothes from home. And then finally, they sent her up to like to the producers, uh, producers bunk or whatever the, where the writers' room was, and uh, you know because she wouldn't wear the outfit, she went up. She found out there was this woman executive producer who was like, "Just ignore her and make her wear our clothes." <laughs> and she went up there with a the scissor and she clammed the closed the door and she was like, "Bitch, I will cut you." <laughs> and she says, and then I hung it there for about two minutes to make sure she knew I was serious, just <laughs> quietly with a fucking scissor at her throat, <laughs> because and her philosophy. I love this article so much. Her philosophy was this. She cared more than anybody else. She's like, I'm gonna win because I care the most. Like right. these people don't give a fuck about this show. They just want to make their fucking money and move on. She's like, but this show is important. And she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just care more than anybody else. And she eventually won. She got that dude kicked off of her show. She never got the credit for created by. Couldn't do that, but she took over her own fucking show. And as an artist, it's inspiring. It's a good fucking read. Good read. So. All right. Yeah. I'm a fan. I like her. I think she's ballsy, and I, I love that show. That, I mean, you're right. By season nine, it was a little fucking weird. But eight years prior to that, that was a beautiful snapshot of American life. That was the perfect American sitcom. But she had the creative wherewithal to bring Tom Arnold on board, so at least we had that going for us. So we, but we got even, exposed uh, he, to him. I'm, yeah, but he's even funny on that show. That show works, man. It's, 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 it's a beautiful piece of television. Speaking of TV shows that don't work, Chelsea Handler... <laughs> has announced that she may be leaving her popular E! show, Chelsea Lately, because they are currently in negotiations. Her contract's over in 2012, and she says, and I kid you not, I want to utilize my brain. I want to do something that's more mindful and isn't celebrity-centered. So she may be leaving her show because she feels that she's got more to give. I can't keep doing the same thing. My brain is bleeding. Oh, I wish. <laughs> If lately is the show I'm going to do, then it's going to change. It may turn out that I'm done with it forever. Apparently she has bigger plans. <laughs> I want to do something for people that they aren't expecting from me. I want to educate people and deliver news. Well, after all, she is the Mort Saul of our generation. She is, she is the Lenny Bruce. Mort Saul she is the George is the Carlin. Paul that you went for with this audience, man? Mort Saul? Although I do have to give her credit where it belongs. She was on the cover of Hamptons magazine this week. I don't know if you saw the cover of Hamptons. It comes out of New York. Here's a picture of her on the cover. She looks pretty good. She, look, beautiful. she looks pretty good on the cover. Very you got to give her that. And here she is at the, uh, the party celebrating the cover of the magazine. Oh! Wow! Still beautiful. Whoa! She, uh, I wonder if she means, if I had to theorize, she's had a couple bestsellers now, so, you know, she's spinning a bunch of plates, so it's not just the TV show, but if I had to read into that, there's been talk about her moving up, network, taking over one of the big fucking late night shows, so maybe that's what this is about. Well, she wants to use her brain, Kevin, she's got a lot she wants to teach us, she's got a lot she wants to educate us about. Yeah. Photoshopping, apparently, is what she wants to educate us about, mostly. She's not your Lex Luthor, dude. She is. I'm not her Superman, but she's my Lex Luthor. <laughs> More TV news. Jane Lynch has been given the uh, call to host the 63rd Primetime Emmy Awards this year. Right on, man. Talented lady. Yeah, very, she's very funny entertaining. As fuck. All those uh, Christopher Guest movies, especially. She's very, like, very uh, what's the dog movie? Um, uh, Best in Show. Holy shit, she's, she's really great fucking in funny in that. It was the one about the movie, the movie they made too, uh, the uh, low budget film. For your consideration. For your, for your consideration, consideration yeah. yeah. She's great in that. The Purim, they made the movie about Purim. And she was right. also in, uh, in which one called The one, that, um, A Mighty Wind? Was Mighty that Wind. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very talented. Where they're in, they talk about the religion, where they like worship color and shit like yep. that. Yeah, it was good. Uh, while we're talking about the Emmys, People are already campaigning for Emmy Awards. I thought this was very funny. Uh, my buddy Jimmy Kimmel was in the news this week, along with Pee Wee Herman. You may not remember when the Oscar nominations were going on last year, when people were campaigning for Oscar awards. Uh, Melissa Leo from The Fighter put her own ads out there in the trade papers trying to get people to vote for her because she thought she was underrepresented by uh, the press. And she won. And she won with these ads. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Pee Wee Herman are taking spoofs on her ads to try to get Emmy attention for their... Uh, shot at getting an Emmy Award as well. Pee Wee Herman spoofed one of her ads. I got a photo here of the ad, and, and this is <laughs> Melissa's ad here. 
That's Pee Wee over there in the same mink coat by the pool asking people to consider for him. And uh, Jimmy Kimmel also decided to spoof one of Melissa's ads of Melissa dressed in a low-cut black dress. Jimmy thought he'd try the same tack to see if people would vote for him for the Emmy, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, should we take a look at Geek News? Fuck yes. <laughs> geek News, one of our favorite parts of the show. James, hit it. Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kev. Geek News. The Dark Knight Rises is still a few years away. One year. It's one year away. It's coming next summer. summer I've, I've got the dates year. marked on my calendar, man. I can't wait. The last Christopher Nolan Batman movie, but they're already ramping up the viral publicity campaign. We saw that photo of Bane two weeks ago. And now videos have uh, hit the internet. One video features what looks like Arkham Asylum with the chanting going on and people marching in the background. Very disturbing image. And another one, uh, even more disturbing, because it looks like Anthony Michael Hall is working again. Yeah. He plays a, uh, a Gotham City reporter, apparently. He was in uh, the last one. He was in Dark Knight. Yeah. He was the Mike something, the, the anchor on GCN. Gotham Here's the Cable. video that hit the web this week about uh, the Dark Knight Rises. It's red rum, red rum, yeah, red rum, bit. red uh, rum. They debunked that pretty quickly. Who debunked it? Online. That's not real. That's it not isn't? That, no, no, no. From ever, is anyone else got that? Yeah, not real. Not real. Not right? real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him and I was like, went crazy. Bro. I was like, oh my God, Dark Knight footage. <laughs> fat, 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 fat. And it's not real. After I came, I found out it wasn't real. <laughs> well, as long as it's afterwards, that's all the matter. Totally. I was just like, well, that was awkward. Yeah. But yeah, it's not real. It's fan-made stuff. Well, good on them. I know. It looks pretty good. Got well me done. excited. Man. Yeah, me too. Warner should hire them. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of DC Comics, they are rebooting everything in the comic book world. Yeah. Starting from scratch with all their characters. Yeah. Maybe time for me to say goodbye. Really? Is that where? Well, this seems like this is the point where they want you to say hello because no, they're starting think, with number one. I think they want me to say goodbye. Really? That yeah. did out. Because you've you? stopped. You stopped reading for the most part, right? You just don't have the I've time stopped, and energy uh, to read comics I've anymore. I've stopped to collect. I own a comic book store, so I, technically I get new comics every week, but right. uh, I don't uh, read the the actual comics. I'll read trade paperbacks, collections, and stuff like that. But yeah. the actual issues, no. So I understand. Like, look, there's some people who've been like. Um, talking about, uh, you know, having collected Superman since issue 400. They're up to like 900 or something now. But that's all going to dial back to Everybody's one. Everybody's going back to one. Yeah, so some cats, you know, long-time readers, like, what the fuck? Here's the thing that I, I, I think I understand. I just want to confirm, though. I believe they're rebooting or restarting every story, too. So it's they not are. like they're it's just... It's not just the numbers. They're yeah. going back to... They're going to redo the origins and the story and everything that's going on so with these So Batman 1 will include the death of his parents and all that kind right. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, look, their philosophy is this. Right now, yeah. comic books are enjoying the most attention uh, they've had from the mainstream, like, ever. They make movies of them now. These movies aren't... Uh, comic books used to exist in their own little pocket world where they're right. like, oh, the funny books, and they're great for keeping licenses alive and making and, uh, you know, lunch boxes and shit like that. But now they're big money, man. Now it's just like you can make billions of dollars, and, and every... Like a DC or a Marvel has thousands of possible licenses. Every character is a potential movie, lunchbox, something like that. So it's big money now. So now they're treating it a lot more seriously. Uh, so, yeah. Let's take a look at music news. We were just talking about this guy last week. Chet Hayes is his name. He, um, he's the son of Tom Hanks. His name is Chester Hanks. And he went to U Northwestern University and he became a rapper named Chet Hayes. And he put out a song that we made fun of a couple months ago, and uh, that's what led us to our first rap battle, where we used uh, Tom Hanks' movie names to, 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 to rap against each other. Well, he's got a new single out, and I thought it was important that we hear it, because it's fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Another Chance, and I just thought it was important that everyone listen to it so you know not what to get the next time you're downloading music. Here's Chet Hayes. I know it's not a Wrong, but I won't do it again. Told you that last time, but I'm gonna tell you again. I gotta. 
Cause you know I gotta get in my zone Turn my swag on and holla Cause it helps with these poems So it's Gucci, Louis Prada Whatever you want Take you shopping when I wanna It's whatever you want Keep you looking tip top While we pop a few bottles Time to speed it up Like we push it on the throttle I know it's my mistake It is your mistake, sir It is It's absolutely I your mistake I thought keep, said keep, lo- keep you looking tip top While we pop a few buttholes No, I wish that would be clever. It's just a few bottles. Bottles. Yeah. Usual rapper shit. He had me at buttholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like how he rhymed again in the first line with again in the second line. He's got a gift. He's a master. <laughs> All right, let's move on. One of our favorite times of the show where we talk about how big Liam Neeson's cock is. James? Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam that's how big it is. For those of you who are new listeners to Hollywood Babylon, uh, Kevin Smith is fascinated with the size, girth, length of Liam Neeson's cock. Ever since I saw it. You wish you had seen it. I know, really. The legend is he's got the biggest dick in Hollywood. Uh, not that he is the biggest dick. He's the nicest guy in Hollywood. That's what but I they heard. Say, well, yeah, that's why he's so nice. He's got a huge cock. I'd be nice, too, if I had a giant cock. <laughs> totally. I'd be the happiest guy on the planet. This dude's carrying a whole extra human between his legs, is the, is the word. So we started talking about the size of it, and uh, one of our listeners, John McGuire in Glasgow, who is, of course, in a Garmy base there in the UK, he started liamneesonscock.tumblr.com, where we've been collecting all the Liam Neeson cock jokes for the past couple months and every week we take a look at our favorite new ones from the tumbler so here's this week's list liam neeson's cock is so big that when he went to the clinic for a burning sensation the doctor revealed that it was just pinocchio trying to get out <laughs> remember pinocchio started to fire yeah, yeah, yeah. in the well inside the well liam neeson's cock is so big it shakes him after he pisses <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, in Venice, he's his own gondolier. Well, that's big. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big, there is an intermission between his orgasm and his ejaculation. (laughs) You can go out, get something to eat, get something to drink, come back in for the the second act. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big, a group of Chinese carry it over their heads and through the streets to celebrate their new year. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he doesn't shoot semen, he shoots spacemen. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big, women refer to it as the Kobayashi Maru. (laughs) It's the the lose-lose situation, I believe. Gotta rewire that shit. Liam Neeson's cock is so big that it simultaneously played Jean Valjean both on Broadway and (laughs) off-Broadway. A random Broadway joke, but I like it. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, Marley Matlin can hear it coming. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big that Chilean miners have been stuck inside it for months. (laughs) And they like it there. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big that Kevin should probably see a behavioral psychologist about it. His semi-obsessive relationship is really disturbing. Seriously, you need help, man. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big that only the penitent man shall pass. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that Pooh and his friends call it the Hundred Acre Wood. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big his mother walked with a wheelbarrow in her last trimester. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big all of his booty calls are long distance. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big Michael Bay directs his home sex videos. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, Malcolm X said, we didn't land on Liam Neeson's cock. Liam Neeson's cock landed on us. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, when it hits the floor, it sounds like Kevin dropping the man grate. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that in order to fool its arch, ne- arch enemies, it puts on glasses each morning. It becomes Miss Pepper Gomez, a young, spunky reporter with a nose for news and a pension for trouble. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, George of the Jungle keeps slamming into it. (laughs) Liam Neeson's cock is so big that if you get thrown off while riding it, a clown jumps in front of it to keep it distracted while you escape. (laughs) And Liam Neeson's cock is so big, hipsters no longer like it, but still applaud its earlier work. (laughs) That is Hollywood Babylon for this week, ladies and gentlemen. 
Go out and get yourself some man great. Yeah. Uh, till next week, or well, till a few weeks from now, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Good night, everybody. <laughs>